Today's story is one of the most interesting YouTube journeys I have ever seen. How did somebody go from having zero speedrunning experience to becoming one of the top 10 globally ranked Super Mario Odyssey speedrunners in just a couple of weeks? And then follow that up to become a full-time successful YouTuber and streamer. Welcome to Ink Thinks. This is the Rise of Creator series, where we break down the YouTube journeys of your favorite YouTubers. Hit like if you want me to make more of these, and let me know who to cover next in the comments below. As for today, this is the story of Small Ant and his rise on YouTube. Tanner Ant, more commonly known by his online alias, Small Ant, was born on May 3rd, 1996, and lives in British Columbia. I'm looking at his channel with millions of views spread across different speedruns and game challenges, it would be easy to assume that he's always had a passion for beating games quickly and in interesting ways, but this wasn't always the case. Growing up, Ant always had a love for gaming, and like many people growing up around this time, he found himself interested in three games in particular. Pokemon, Minecraft, and Little Big Planet. For those of you who are unfamiliar, at its root, Little Big Planet is a puzzle platformer game where the main goal is to get from point A to point B, but the real draw to it lies beneath the surface customizability. While on its face, Little Big Planet was a casual, cartoony game experience, the level builder within it was incredibly deep and allowed for hours of creation with nearly anything your mind could conjure. By looking at a fan-created level, you could see the creator's individuality and creativity shine through their designs and kind of get a sense of who they are. This game's open-ended creativity captivated Ant, and the levels that he created within provide an interesting insight into his personality. Rather than creating something quick or routine, he wanted to make a truly unique experience. He went so far as to spend hundreds of hours connecting wires, creating custom pixel art, and analyzing game design to create a brand new game engine within Little Big Planet to support his levels. And the end result was something detailed enough to recreate the experience of old Legend of Zelda Game Boy Advance games. He uploaded these levels to the game's community under the screen name Small Ant 1, which is the name that he chose because when he was 12 years old, facing the difficult challenge of creating a RuneScape username, he saw a small ant crawling on the windowsill. These levels that he created were incredible and often felt like entirely different games. The hundreds of hours he invested paid off when the community managers behind Little Big Planet were so impressed by his levels that they featured them as official team picks to show thousands of fans. By the end of this era of him playing Little Big Planet, Ant likely had more of his levels team picked than anyone else on Earth. Wanting a place to share his creative process for these levels, Ant began streaming on Twitch under the username SmallAnt1. Over the course of the next few months, Ant continued to stream Little Big Planet and also expanded out to a few other games such as 3D, Mario, or Zelda titles. However, despite all of this content and months of consistency on Twitch, he never really averaged more than a couple of viewers each stream, but that was all about to change. In November of 2017, he got a message from a friend who was in the speedrunning community, informing him about an international Super Mario Odyssey speedrun tournament. Ant had only ever been a casual fan of Mario and had never even touched speedrunning. On top of this, the tournament was only three days away. The entire concept of joining a competitive tournament for something you have almost zero experience in is completely ludicrous. But Ant decided to rise up and meet the challenge in spite of that, and he had some serious work to do. The tournament was in just about 72 hours from the day he heard about it, and in order to even enter the tournament, he needed to have a speedrun time on record. Over the next two days, he spent 16 hours watching runs from record holders and copying their actions to increase his own speed. He'd practice the game incrementally, mastering one section of Mario Odyssey before restarting and making his way to the next section, slowly increasing his fluency with the game as a whole. When the final day to register came around, Ant practiced another four hours, tried a few practices practice runs, and then submitted his first ever recorded speedrun time, coming in at 1 hour and 18 minutes flat. The tournament was broken up over the course of a few weeks, and the competition was fierce. Ant progressed through the bracket, upping his training schedule to 16 hours of practice each day, 8 hours on stream and 8 hours off, dedicating every waking moment to perfecting his time. Ant blew through his tournament matches, slowly working his way to semifinals where he would finally end his run and take third place in the tournament, losing only to the current world record holder and someone who had held other world records in other 3D Mario games. 
And just like that, Small Ant went from someone who had never done a speedrun before in his life to taking third place in an international speedrun tournament against experienced players and ranking top 10 on Super Mario Odyssey's online global leaderboards. This victory came at a cost though. Apart from the mental toll that comes from putting more hours into a single game than even the most demanding full-time jobs would require, his body began to feel the strain as well. His hands had taken so much abuse from small, repetitive motions while speedrunning that by the end of the tournament he could hardly even use his thumbs and was diagnosed with a repetitive strain injury. He was forced to take some time off of speedrunning and was only able to use his hands for a few hours each day. However, this injury didn't slow him down, instead redirecting his energy to becoming a contributor within the speedrunning community since he couldn't compete himself. As he interacted with the people in this community, he noticed a couple of questions popping up over and over and over again, and he knew that he could help. Ant wanted to make a definitive guide specifically geared to helping people with these common questions and helping new people get into the game. After considering a few different methods, he decided to create a series of instructional YouTube videos. For his first video, a 14 and a half minute dive into the game's optimal movement, he spent two weeks just refining the script. He wanted to make it as perfect and comprehensive as possible. And on February 8th, 2018, he posted the very first video to the Small Ant YouTube channel titled Super Mario Odyssey Speedrunning Movement Guide. Hi there, I'm Small Ant One, and welcome to my movement guide for Super Mario Odyssey Speedrunning. Just like his previous creations in Little Big Planet, this hard work and attention to detail really paid off, and the video was outstandingly comprehensive. So much so that several prominent speedrunners in the scene featured it, leading to around 3,000 views quickly coming to the very first video on the channel. This motivated Ant to continue with tutorials for every single kingdom in the game, as well as other advanced trick breakdowns. And before he knew it, he had a blossoming Super Mario Odyssey tutorial channel. He took the momentum from these tutorial videos and transferred it to something called Super Mario Odyssey Tasks, which were challenges sent out to community members specifically designed to improve their skills in the game. Upon completion, they submitted it to Ant to be featured in a video. He coupled this with something called Sub-Area Showdowns, where he challenged other speedrunners to outspeed him in different sections of the game, allowing Ant to compete in short bursts without needing to overuse his hands. The editing schedule to keep up with these videos, but especially the tasks, was grueling. Every Friday when the tasks were submitted, he needed to look through around 250 separate entries. He woke up at 7am to watch through submissions for a few hours until around noon, at which point he hopped on Twitch to stream until 2 in the afternoon. Following that, he'd look over remaining submissions, taking him until about 6 o'clock at night, after which he edited the video together, added graphics, and sent the video to render at about midnight. With the length of the render process, he got to sleep for around 2 hours until 2 a.m., at which point he woke up, posted the video to YouTube, and then drove 200 miles to his job at a sawmill to be there by 5 a.m. He did this for 8 weeks in a row. While uploading these task videos to YouTube, Ant began to notice an interesting pattern emerging within the Mario community. Challenge runs began popping up all over the place, such as can you beat Super Mario Odyssey without collecting a single coin, or what is the minimum number of captures possible in Super Mario Odyssey. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the game, Super Mario Odyssey has a mechanic where you throw your cap at an enemy and gain control of them for a brief period of time. This capture mechanic is absolutely pivotal to the game's design and is fundamental in its completion. So naturally, people wanted to try to cut this out entirely and beat the game in spite of the self-imposed difficulty. Ant had a streamer friend named Fearsome Fire who had been attempting his own minimum capture run and called Small Ant in for some help. He was attempting to pull off a difficult trick called the nut jump that would allow you to skip several previously unskippable captures. To pull this trick off, you needed to input a command within a 30th of a second window dozens of times in a row. However, despite it being an incredibly tough challenge, Small Ant found it surprisingly intuitive and impressed his small streaming audience of around 7 viewers, who eventually convinced Ant to do a full minimum capture run. This was a sentiment that Fearsome Fire also echoed toward Ant, saying that recently, instead of creating custom content for YouTube, he had been splicing together his own streams in a fun way to upload to YouTube, and they performed better and were easier to create. Ant decided to put all of this together and attempted his very first minimum capture run. When he put this together into a YouTube video titled, I was the third person ever to do the speed run and hit upload, the video was a huge success. 
Despite barely being over 1,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel, the video shot past 3,000 views in a single day, which more than doubled what his previous best performing videos had done in a week. Ant knew that this was his opportunity and he needed to double down on it. He quickly made another video, attempting an incredibly difficult Super Mario 64 challenge, and while that did okay, it was his next video that really struck gold. Here we go. This is it. This is the run. It's starting. I'm putting the blindfold on. There's no going back. Wish me luck, chat. As a half joke on his stream, Ant said that if he ever reached 60 subscribers on Twitch, then he would complete Super Mario Odyssey while completely blindfolded. While this had been attempted and completed with great difficulty in older games like Super Mario 64, no one had ever even thought of trying it in a game as expansive as Super Mario Odyssey. Ant spent countless hours trying to pull off the run and was eventually able to splice together a video of the challenge. When he uploaded it to YouTube, it proved to be a huge launching point for the channel. The video got thousands of views in the first day or two after posting, but then the gods of the YouTube algorithm really smiled on the channel and the video started getting thousands of views every hour. And it just kept rising. Within two weeks, he had over 40,000 views on that one video, which brought traffic to all the other videos on his channel. And, never one to miss an opportunity, Ant rode the wave of this momentum by making more and more of these challenge videos, each one adding to his momentum and fueling his growth. These videos were outperforming anything he had ever done before, and less than two months later, he had some of his videos pulling in over 500,000 views in a single month, and doubled his subscriber count along the way. He stopped making task and sub-area showdown videos, and enlisted the previous ones to reduce noise and focus his channel on what he knew worked. This was soon followed by another big turning point for the channel, that came when the streamer we were talking about earlier, Fearsome Fire, tweeted at Ant that although he had been passed up by Ant's other speedrunning records, he still held a better any percent time, meaning that overall he could still beat the game faster start to finish. To which Ant replied, give me a week. And not only did he beat his time in just three days, but in an effort to not clickbait his friend's name, he titled the video, Some Guy Thought He Was Better Than Me at Super Mario Odyssey. This title omitted the popular speedrunner's name, but also had a secondary effect. Replacing the name with Some Guy rather than Fearsome Fire made the video so much more accessible. People outside of the community likely wouldn't know who Fearsome Fire was, but genericizing the title made it more accessible and told a clearer story. This was one of the key factors in making the video more appealing and launching it upwards of 2 million views today. And this success made something click for Ant. Even if he had a fantastic idea, if he presented it in a non-engaging way, he just wasn't going to get the traction that the idea deserved. And he realized that there were thousands of those ideas all over the internet that were just poorly packaged to the point that the video was dead on arrival. He became obsessed with studying what made videos work. If he clicked on a video, he asked himself why, what drew his attention to it, doubly so if it was a video he didn't like. When he combined this simple exercise with the aforementioned realization concerning packaging content, it opened the door to a lot of his best performing videos. For example, around this time he noticed a video online called Beating Super Mario Odyssey Without the Left Stick, which is a fascinating concept, but it requires some prior knowledge of the game to fully grasp the idea. He decided to make his own version and make the message a lot clearer. He titled it Super Mario Odyssey But Mario Can't Walk, which made the video so much easier to understand at a glance, and of course the video performed well. But as he continued to optimize these videos, he started to get a little bit burned out on playing Super Mario Odyssey every single day for years at this point. He began to dabble with the idea of doing other games on his channel, such as Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild or Pokemon. I said that I would do a Breath of the Wild 100% speedrun if I got 500 subs. I said this as a joke, and here we are. He really wanted to come at these franchises with a lot of force and a lot of momentum, and he tried a bunch of really unique challenges, such as beating Breath of the Wild to 100% completion despite having no prior knowledge, or trying to beat Pokemon games while blindfolded. But unfortunately, despite his best efforts, none of these really took off, and they were only pulling in around 25% of the views of his Mario videos. And it wasn't just YouTube either. When he streamed non-Mario games on Twitch, he went from an average of 400 concurrent viewers to only around 80. Breath of the Wild was several years old at this point and had largely fallen out of popularity. 
and a lot of the Pokemon games that he was playing were older as well. But he quickly ran into an issue that he would have to surpass in order to grow. How do you get views on a game that nobody is playing? The answer that he settled on was to try to recreate what he saw with his Mario Can't Walk video. He compiled some of the most broadly recognizable parts of the game, such as the overworld landscape and remote bomb explosion in Breath of the Wild, and put it into a video called Breath of the Wild Speedruns in 2019 Are Insane. It was a title that required zero knowledge to understand, and this strategy worked wonders. It skyrocketed in views, sitting at over 3 million today. And the success of this video brought views to all the other Zelda content that he had been building up on his channel, and before he knew it, he was getting more viewers for Breath of the Wild content than he was from Mario. He ended up being able to replicate the success as well with a Pokemon video he titled Pokemon But Every Battle My Team Is Randomized, which also exploded in popularity and sent reverberations to his other Pokemon content. And although it took a while to build up, he'd formed three pillars of content between Mario, Zelda, and Pokemon that could each consistently pull in good numbers. He took this mass appeal strategy even farther by becoming the world's fastest pencil sharpener in an obscure speedrun category. After all, who hasn't sharpened the pencil before. It's a video that literally anyone can watch. But it also cemented for him a fact that every content creator hopes to reach. People weren't watching Small Ant to see games played in a unique way. Rather, they were watching games played in a unique way to see Small Ant. It is all too easy to look at a streamer or YouTuber and think that it's an easy job. That all you need to do is sit down and play video games consistently on Twitch, and before you know it, you'll have a career. But what's too often overlooked is the crazy amount of work that happens behind the scenes. And it's through this hard work, creativity, and attention to detail that created the Small Ant channel that we all know today.